CCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. And thank you for joining us today on Crosstalk. The question today, is the released Obama birth certificate a fraud? Joining us today to talk about this issue with some startling information is Dr. Jerome Corsi. He has a Ph.D. from Harvard in political science. He serves as senior staff reporter for WND. He's the author of two number one New York Times nonfiction bestsellers, Unfit for Command, Swift Boat Veterans Speak Out Against John Kerry, and The Obama Nation, Leftist Politics and the Cult of Personality. He's also authored Where's the Birth Certificate, The Case That Barack Obama Is Not Eligible to Be President, and a brand new ebook, A Question of Eligibility. Dr. Corsi, thank you for joining us today on Crosstalk. Uh, Jim, great pleasure and honor to be back with you. Thank you. For several years, you have been researching, you have been investigating, you have been trying Traveling, you've been reporting on the controversy surrounding the birth certificate of Barack Hussein Obama. And before we look at yesterday's developments, if you would uh, tell us why is this issue so important to you well, and to the nation? First of all, the question is uh, Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution, which requires a president to be a natural born citizen. Not just a citizen, but a natural born citizen. And what that mean, meant. I believe, to the founders, from all the research I've done, is a person who was born to U.S. parents uh, at the time of their birth and born on U.S. soil. Now, Barack Obama's father was Kenyan, and that should have disqualified Barack Obama right there uh, because two U.S. citizen parents, obviously a dual citizen, Barack Obama born a citizen of uh, the Commonwealth of Great Britain because his father was a citizen of Kenya when he was born, and Kenya was a Commonwealth country, and then the mother being the United U.S. citizen. Uh, that's not a natural-born citizen. And secondly, if Barack Obama turns out not to have been born in Hawaii, then again, that's not born on U.S. soil. And just kind of really to put this in context, Barack Obama has so few documents that are available. We don't have his passport records. We don't have his school records. Uh, he lived in Indonesia. He used the name Barry Satoro. We don't have adoption records. Uh, this is like an un- undocumented president. Mm-hmm. And so you really have a question of who is, what is the identity of Obama and why is it so hard to obtain legitimate documents about his life? Are they all fabricated? Is it all a lie? Who is this guy really? I mean, that's what the questions begin to come down to, Jim. Well, where are the American people on this issue? Is is the nation concerned by the issue, or do they see this as being a non-issue? Well, I can, I'll can i measure it in different ways. I mean, WND.com, where I'm a senior staff reporter, Joseph Farah, uh, the head of WND, um, we did a simultaneous, you know, we did a live, live streaming of the press conference yesterday and wrote a story about the live press conference yesterday with Joe Arpaio in Phoenix. I was there. I presented at the at the press conference. We were getting a million hits an hour. My, a million hits an hour. I mean, it's, these are numbers that are phenomenal when you think about how many people are, you know, reading actually reading the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, and so the press, which used to you know traditionally be kind of a filter between news and people. I just don't think it's functioning that way. With live streaming of of an event, people connect directly with the news as it's happening. They don't need the press anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, programs like yours, um, access to information through talk radio and the Internet have transformed the importance and role of the mainstream media to the point where I'm not sure the media is going to survive in the future. The mainstream media doesn't want to cover this story, and uh, we're developing, I know the sheriff's posse is developing all, uh, information, and it's clear that the White House has threatened news organizations, including, I believe, Fox, that if they ever were to report the birth certificate or other of these stories about Obama's identity, the White House would intend to come down like a ton of bricks on. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Sheriff, uh, you mentioned uh, Sheriff Joe, uh, State of Arizona, uh, just released a report yesterday on this investigation being done by his his cold case posse. And before we look at the uh, findings, Dr. Corsi, uh, tell us uh, what is this cold case posse? Who makes up the posse? How did it come about? The cold case posse is a group of, uh, first of all, they're volunteers. So they don't cost the people of Maricopa County anything for the volunteers to do an investigation. Is one of the unique features of Sheriff Arpaio's staff that made it possible for the Maricopa County residents to come and say they'd like the sheriff to look into an issue that could affect them as voters of Maricopa County, their voting rights. Uh, they didn't want someone using a, you know, a fake document, like Barack Obama, a fake birth certificate, <coughs> to get on the ballot for president. Now, <coughs> the, this group is... Uh, former law enforcement detectives, officers, uh, and uh, lawyers with law enforcement experience. It's a very tough group. I mean, I initially came, the posse was constituted, and, and by the way, WND.com is, is uh, people go to WND.com and sign up for free live streaming. You can see on demand the press conference or get the press release. And we just released an electronic book, myself, and Mike Zolo, Zulo, Z-U-L-L-O, Jerome Corsi, and Michael, Z-U-L-L-O, Question of Eligibility, which is a written report of the findings of this cold case posse. And I think you're going to find that it is really, um, you know, a full story in the e-book and you can watch the press conference, which is where this information was presented. Folks, uh, WND.com is the go-to source on this issue. Right. Um, it is, uh, I mean, they are it, the clearinghouse as it relates to stories on this matter. Um, and uh, they have been covering it from day one. Uh, but uh, so this posse, the, the former law enforcement de- detectives? Yes, and-, and when I first met with them, Jim, you know, in October, I came in for a weekend. They, we had 18 hours of meetings. And it was tough. I mean, the first first half of the day was just grilling me. What were my motivations? And what did I want to do? Why was I doing this? I had done the Swift Boat book. I mean, this was some of the toughest questioning. The posse did not approach this task with any great enthusiasm. I mean, they really didn't want to find the president had fake documents, a fake birth certificate, and a fraudulent selective service registration card. And those were the conclusions that there's probable cause to believe a crime had been committed in forging both those documents for Barack Obama. And so when I was questioned, the law enforcement officers in in this posse were very demanding. They were extremely critical. I mean, I presented, I agreed to present all my information to them from three years of accumulated research. And they set about to corroborate that independent of me. There were hundreds of witnesses, affidavits, testimony that I was not privy to. I did not participate in any of the cold case posse's internal meetings or their deliberations or their vote-taking. So when the decision was reached that the cold case posse, the two crimes had been committed, you know, for, forging these documents and presenting them to the American people as authentic, both the birth certificate and Barack Obama's Selective Service Registration Card, this was not a conclusion that the cold case posse started with. It was one that the evidence forced them to conclude. And again, I think that's a very important to realize, that this was not set up as a, let's go get Obama. That was the last thing that this group wanted to do, mm-hmm. except that the evidence was so compelling they had no choice you know, as legitimate law enforcement officers, but to conclude there was probable cause of crimes. So bottom line in their findings that were released yesterday, then by uh, Sheriff Ar- Arpaio, is that two crimes have been committed? Uh, yes, okay. two crimes have been committed. That's very powerful. I mean, that's, uh, that, you know, I mean, this is the first time we've heard those kind of words come forth in this. Yes, first time any law enforcement agency duly constituted has looked at the issues of Barack Obama's birth certificate or his selective service registration. And or the other documents. Now, there's, the investigation has, has been broad and includes many different topics that weren't discussed. That the, you know, the posse is not ready to report on them. But the two that the posse was ready to report on, in particular, 
the birth certificate and the Selective Service registration card for Barack Obama, the cold case policy said crimes have been committed. A probable cause that crimes have been committed forging the documents and representing them to the public as if they were authentic. Hmm. And those crimes are felonies. You cannot just go around, you know, making up government documents like birth certificates or selective service registration and passing it around as if it were legitimate. There have been some allegations regarding uh, Mr. Obama's use of a Social Security number that corresponds to a Connecticut address. Yes. Um, uh, any links or anything that came out yesterday? Is is this mystery been solved yet? It's under investigation. That one did not get as far. I mean, it, the see, there's it, the White House will not answer any questions about this, the Social Security number, and so the necessary investigation, which would be, you know, were you ever in Connecticut to apply for this card or? Was there any circumstance under which it may have been issued? The White House will not answer, so that's under investigation yet. To compare it with a selective service registration card, it has a postal date stamp on it. And when the analysis was done of the uh, stamp on President Obama's selective service registration card, the, the stamp had the year 1980 in two digits, only eight zero. Well, the posse mm-hmm. went back and found the postal stamp that was authorized for use in 1980, and it had a four-digit 1980, 1980. It would never had two digits. And so the posse realized they couldn't get a 1980 plug to put in that stamp. You know, there were three plugs, one for the year, one for the month, and one for the date. And so... What the forgers had to do is they had to get a more modern date stamp, the plug for 2008. They cut out the 08, they turned it upside down, inverted it, and put it into the slot on the stamp for the date, the year. And that's why it was two-digit, 8-0 from a 2008 stamp. And it was too far to the right on President Obama's Secret Service registration card. And, in fact, when you cut out the 08 and inverted it, uh, the, the angle that it was cut at pushed to the right the, to the 08 when you stamped it. And so the, the cold case policy was able to demonstrate how the forgery had been done by going and getting original 1980 um, U.S. Postal stamp equipment and then this modern plug for the 2008, figuring out how it was, the 08 was cut and inverted to make it look like it was 80. But since there had never been a postal stamp that had the four digits for 1980, and, and then they got for the Selective Service, you know, a whole raft of legitimate Selective Service registration cards, including two that were from the exact station, the exact postal station where Barack Obama got his, one from the exact station and month in which Barack Obama got his, and the stamp was a 1980, not just an 80. Hmm. We're speaking today with uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi, and our question today, is the Obama certificate a fraud? Our discussion will continue after this break. You're listening to Crosstalk on the VCY America Network. Back to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, creation author and president of the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, does the Bible support a global flood? Yes, Chris, it sure does. The Bible is very clear that the flood of Noah's day was global in nature. In Genesis seven nineteen and 20, it says, And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the water prevail, and the mountains were covered. The worldwide flood also appears in the Psalms and in Isaiah and in Gospels and First and Second Peter. The geologic evidences overwhelmingly point to a worldwide flood, but the biblical evidences absolutely demand it. Some attempt to say that the flood was only local in nature, but the scripture is trustworthy when it says that the flood of Noah's day was global. We see this and should believe it when we go back to Genesis. Thanks, Dr. Morris. For more info on Genesis, visit us on the web at www.icr.org. You're listening.
listening to Crosstalk here on the VCY American Network, and we're speaking today with Dr. Jerome Corsi, who has a brand new ebook out called A Question of Eligibility. Uh, Dr. Corsi, just before we pick up our discussion, uh, where is it our, our listeners can obtain this brand new ebook? Yes, it's an ebook, A uh, Question of Eligibility. And it's um, on about the law enforcement investigation of President Obama's, Obama's birth certificate, the Joe Sheriff Arpaio's investigation. So it's under my name, Jerome Corsi, and Michael Zulo, Z U L L O. You get it on Amazon.com or on BarnesandNoble.com for the Kindle or the Nook on Barnes and Noble. If you don't have a Kindle or Nook, if you buy the book, for instance, through either of these, through the Kindle store on Amazon.com, you can get the Kindle software free and load it up on your IBM or Mac laptop or PC or whatever you have, the personal computer, also available on the uh, iPad. So it's going to be in all electronic formats, a question of eligibility. It's on the law enforcement investigation, Joe Pyle's investigation of Bra- mm-hmm. Obama's birth certificate. And uh, it's Jerome Corsi and Mike Zulo, Zulo, Z-U-L-L-O. And, folks, you can't get anything more current than that right. ebook at this point. Uh, Jerome, uh, the Social Security number, is it true that the Social Security number that is being used by uh, Barack Obama does not pass, uh, did not pass a test of E-Verify? Yes, I reported on that. A woman, uh, Linda Jordan, uh, got into the to use the E-Verify system, and she... There's a way you can do a self-test, and she kind of was able to put the number through as if it were her own, or and it came back a mismatch. In other words, the number did not match a valid number in the uh, Social Security system. So, you, she, you know, if Barack Obama went to get a job in the private economy, tried to use this Social Security number, um you know, to register to pay taxes in that in that company, and they e-verified that he couldn't be employed. Hmm. The uh, cold case posse said they have identified at least one person of interest in the alleged forgery of yes. the birth certificate. Is is there any more information as to what that was meant by that, or or any leads on what they're talking about? Well, I mean, it's a person that um, has been suspected forged the birth certificate, and uh, again, there's. Credible evidence pointing to this person. Uh, it's it's still at the point of, of a person of interest. In other words, the evidence has not been developed to where it's probable cause to believe the person actually committed the forgery. And because the information is being developed, the privacy of the person is being respected at this point, and the name is not being mentioned. And you know, I'm, I'm constrained not to give out any information that would lead to who the person might be. But I can tell you that it is true that there is a particular individual who's been found that they think forged the birth certificate. Uh, Let me ask you this as well. Uh, How does the Hawaii Department of Health enter into this matter? Well, the Hawaii Department of Health has been uncooperative uh, to everyone wanting to see the original um, paper and pen records or microfilm of Obama's birth records, whatever the department has. Uh, and again, if this were a court of law, uh, you could never introduce the electronic document and the Xerox copies the White House handed out on April 27, 2011. Mm-hmm. The court would demand that you see the original documents because those are the only ones that a court-certified forensic examiner would be able to render an opinion on. You can't render opinions on copies, and electronic documents are yet very difficult to you know to find out whether they're legitimate. Certainly, the court certifiers would, forensic experts would demand to see the original records, and the Hawaii Department has sealed them away in the vault. I mean, it's one of the things that, as a reporter, initially caught my interest. I was saying to begin with, look, if Obama wanted this question to go away. He would have just said to the American public, and, you know, I'm going to open up, I'm going to give authorization to the Hawaii Department of Health to release all my original records, to bring a team of forensic experts in here, and let them identify and render a judgment within the Hawaii Department. Instead, it's all sealed away. Uh, You can't take a look. The Hawaii Department won't even answer questions. They won't cooperate with anyone. They've now 
toughened up the Hawaii law, so it's almost impossible to get anybody's birth certificate. It's almost impossible to get your own. It's about the only person that can easily get their birth records. And even then, the Hawaii Department says, well, maybe we'll only give the short forms out. So it's an extremely difficult state. And Hawaii is the state of the Union, I'd say, the easiest state to get uh, fraudulent birth documents. If you're not born in Hawaii, they'll still give you a Hawaii birth certificate. If you come in, the family comes in and registers the birth at one of the outlying offices and says, look, we're Hawaiian residents, this baby's born, make this baby a Hawaiian birth. And and yet, when this matter comes before the White House at the press conferences, and I know the WND correspondent has been right. there, I mean, he, it's virtually laughed off, and and they said, well, we've already released the you know the certificate uh, to and with which is the White House is uh, attesting to the fact that that is the one and only legitimate birth certificate. Well, and again, this is just how the White the White House realizes, I believe, that this is a lethal issue for the president, for the presidency, because it shows, I think, and is going to show, there's a fraud here, and there's going to have to then be explanation down the road as to how the president uh, got into office if the birth certificate is forged. Now, the issue, the White House making a laughing matter of this, the White House re, you know, did not release the original birth certificate document. Now we've got two documents. We've got a Selective Service Registration Card for the president that was forged probable cause to believe that was forged. That's, those were the two separate documents that the cold case posse has reached the judgment there is probable cause to believe a crime has been committed. That's a real threshold question. I mean, this is a game changer. We're not debating in the public anymore whether this scanner or that scanner produced you know, the president's birth certificate. It's now uh, a cold case posse examination that the birth certificate and the Selective Service registration records are forged for Obama, and therefore there's probable cause that they're both criminally produced. Dr. Corsi, I understand, too, that there's some documents that are missing from the uh, uh, records of the Immigration and Naturalization Service cards that were filled out by airline passengers? Yes. The, you see, Jim, when you, it, uh, when you, in 1961, that era, when you came into the United States on a foreign flight, both U.S. citizens and foreign nationals were required to fill out this little four by six or whatever it was INS card that listed your name and your nationality and other you know where you lived, your address, and other information that would be relevant, your passport numbers, etc. And the Immigration Naturalization Service filed those forms. I had been looking for years for them. The Efforts of the Cold Case Posse and the National Archives produced the forms and the records. And since I live in New Jersey near Washington, D.C., the Cold Case Posse asked me to go examine the records. I was in, I'm looking at the um, August 1961 records, and I was astounded. I came to August 1st, and then the records from August 2nd, most of the records from August 1st, and None of the records, from, they were gone, all the way through August 7th, the week of the president's birth. Interesting. The tape, you know, the, the microfilm starts going white and then it goes black. I, I just thought, well, maybe they misnumbered the boxes. Maybe the next box, box 185 instead of 184. And by the way, in this book, Question of Eligibility, I put the pictures of the reels, and I show you how it looks when the reel was expiring. So the registration cards of immigration INS service from passengers coming into Honolulu from the Pacific and from August 2nd, 1961 to August 7th, 1961, the week of President Obama's birth, are gone. They're not there. And, I, when they, and the archives on archives stationery wrote a letter affirming that the records are missing, and they really do not have, other than speculating, um, any explanation for why they're gone. Hmm. What about uh, uh, Sheriff Arpaio now? Does he have any recommended uh, action that he's uh, suggesting at this point? Well, I think the now the investigation is going to move toward uh, identifying suspects, and I think there's going to be requests for information coming out. Uh, there's going to be additional 
leads followed. Um, I know the question has been asked. The Hawaii Department said, "Well, Sheriff Arpaio never asked to see any records here." Well, there was, um, you know, we first of all, Sheriff Arpaio knew that the department was not going to cooperate in Hawaii, and now that the investigation has reached the point to believe there's probable cause, that the computer file released by the White House of the president's birth certificate is a forgery. Now there's real reason and probable cause to press the Hawaii Department to release the original records. And I believe that effort's going to be formally made. Any reaction from the national media pertaining to the sheriff's uh, press conference yesterday? Uh, Very little. I mean, the national media really does not want to talk about this. Uh, And I think think to a large extent, because the national media has been pressured by the White House not to talk about this. And um, the direct efforts, I think, and direct threats have come out of the White House. Has the White House said anything since this press conference yesterday? Not to my knowledge. Wow. Um, This is truly amazing. Anything else that's significant that's come out from the sheriff's uh, conference yesterday? Well, I think, I mean, the coverage was enormous. We had uh, the live streaming that we did in Mm WND.com was just, I think, maybe... More people, that may be the most watched live stream yet to date in Internet history. So, you know, that's really a huge number of people. For the first half hour, it was kind of rough. We got it working for the next hour. It was an hour and a half news conference. It was only supposed to be about 45 minutes. But with questions, it just, it was a very intense news conference. Um, tension in the room was very high. Um, and, at the end of it, you know, the World Net Daily uh, was handing out, you get the uh, press releases, uh, just sign up for them in WND, and they're emailed to you. And we've now got today, WND has, uh, dot com has got uh, on-demand video to watch the press conference in 15-minute segments. So I believe you can see now the entire press conference in excellent audio and visual. And that's up on, and the, and the reaction's huge because I think, you know, despite the block out of the story in the mainstream media, the American people are being communicated to the event directly by um, news websites like WND.com. Um, hey, while this is going on, uh, there's some other things going on in the states, uh, Georgia, and, and uh, was it Indiana as well? Yes, uh, Indiana, I think. think there was a lawsuit in the states in, in Pennsylvania that was dismissed for standing. Um, I, I think you're going to see now, especially with Sheriff Arpaio saying that there's probable cause to believe the Obama birth certificate is forged and the Selective Service registration forged, what you're going to see is um, a, a other litigation in other states uh, questioning whether President Obama is a natural-born citizen or whether he should be on the ballot for president in 2012. And with more forensic evidence, you know, probably even Sheriff Arpaio or one of the members of the cold case posse um, subpoenaed to testify at that hearing. Dr. Jerome Corsi, our guest here today on Crosstalk. Folks, what is your reaction to this breaking news story today? Our number, 800-733-9829, 800-733-9829. This is Crosstalk on VCY America. When it comes to the topic of origins, why shouldn't Christians accept millions of years? Couldn't God have used evolution? What about the gap theory? Could God really have created everything in six days? Cain's wife, who was she? Was there really a Noah's Ark and flood? Why does God's creation include death and suffering? Over two dozen diverse questions are addressed in the New Answers book, Volume 1. As a matter of fact, Ken Ham, the editor of this book, said that next to the Bible, this New Answers book, Volume 1, is the most important book for people to read and understand on the topic of creation and origins. Leading apologists answer these questions biblically and logically in a simple-to-read format, including charts and diagrams. Copies of the New Answers book, Volume 1, are available from VCY for a donation of $18 or more by calling 1-800-729-9829. That's toll-free, 1-800-729-9829.
startling information received uh, just yesterday from a cold case posse that had been put together by Sheriff Joe Arpaio as uh, he had been approached by citizens and uh, folks were talking law enforcement detectives full-fledged investigation going on in which uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi was grilled for hour after hour after hour on this matter and as they have uh, launched investigation that have taken them into many many places many many documents and uh, the uh, things that they're uncovering are startling information for the first time we are hearing of two crimes now uh, having been uh, allegedly uh, occurring regarding forged documents and then representing these documents as being factual, uh, you know, to the American people. Uh, we're talking about these issues here today. Just before I go to the calls, Dr. Corsi, if you could just set the record straight on a couple of these chain emails that just circulate and circulate. Um, one of those, if you could just see if it's truth or fiction, for instance, one of these is stating that Mr. Obama's birth listed as August 4th, 1961, lists his father as having lived or been born in Kenya, East Africa. However, it says Kenya did not exist till 1963. Is that true or false? Uh, well, Kenya did not officially exist as Kenya. It was the protectorate of Kenya, I believe, in the Commonwealth. But <clears throat> the truth is that by 1961, uh, it was common knowledge that Kenya was going to be independent. And uh, Kenya was used by many people. It appears all over the place is the name of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kenyans, uh, even coming into the United States, you know, in these immigration cards would say Kenya. Kenya was how the country was commonly referred to. And it would have, it's not surprising that if you'd asked Barack Obama Sr. what his country was, he would have just said Kenya. And another claim is saying that the term African American was not a term used in 1961. Is that? Uh, that's more troubling. That's a more difficult one because, uh, but see, the issue, they didn't say African American on the birth certificate. It basically said Kenyan, you know, and, and the race, this is part of the difficulty. The father tended to put down African as his race. Now, African is not a race. African is a continent. And there are many races who live in Africa. Uh, so, you know, but but again, the, even the vital statistics, birth statistics in the United States have different ways of coding that. And people did type, put down, for instance, they would say China is their race. Okay. Well, China again is not a race, mm -hmm. so it's not it's not a game changer. It's unusual, but it's not a game changer. And one other one, and that is about the name of the hospital. Uh, the claim is that the certificate lists the uh, Kapiolani Maternity and Gyneolo Gynecological Hospital but it had a different name. Uh, is that true or false? It's true. Uh, the hospital did have a different name, but the hospital was going to be merged together with this other hospital. That's how the new name came about, the one that's on Barack Obama's birth certificate. And other birth certificates of the era that we know to be legitimate have the hospital named the same way. So these are not, these are three unusual features. There's a couple more unusual features. The birth certificate lists the father's age uh, as I believe two years younger or older than he was, the father's age is incorrect on the birth certificate. It's hard to imagine how uh, the father was there and the information was given that the father got his, his age incorrectly. But again, you know, the it could have been someone in the family who gave the year. It could have been a mistake. It, it's, again, unusual, but it's not definitive proof that the birth certificate was false. The the, the proof of the birth certificate it was false revol revolved a much more uh, intricate analysis uh, that would be scanner experts, computer experts, and they were able to, to determine, I think, you know, beyond the pro certainly probable cause that this document was fraudulent given the characteristics, the physical characteristics of the electronic file. Let's get to the phone lines, which are jam-packed. Uh, let's begin in Florida with Steve. You're on the air, Steve. Thank you, Jim. Dr. Corsi, I've been following this since uh, before the election. If I was guilty of even 10% of this fraudulent activity, I would be expecting law enforcement <laughs> in my front door. I'd be marched right. out of my house in handcuffs and in prison. Can we expect an arrest forthcoming? Well, I think, I, you know, I think the investigation is going to now have to, it, uh, very quickly the people of interest are going to be identified and investigated. There's one in particular. Uh, the, there's some jurisdictional issues. You know, the people don't reside necessarily in Arizona, and so 
questioning them and figuring out how we're going to question them. These are that these are the issues that the law enforcement people are, in fact, even today discussing. There was an active uh, meeting with the sheriff in which these issues were being discussed, and now the sheriff is going to allocate some law enforcement resources from Maricopa County in addition to the cold case posse, uh, some staff resources for the criminal investigation. Appreciate your call here, Steve. Next to Pensacola, and Jeff, you're on the air. Yes. Go, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I just got a quick question. Um, I mean, the one he shows, you want to tell me that he knows is the one he showed to the media, I think, a couple months ago? So you know for sure it's not. He knows for sure it's not true, and he showed it. Well, I don't know what Barack Obama knows. All I know is that the <clears throat> long form birth certificate that was was shown by the White House on April twenty seventh, two thousand eleven, is uh, this cold case posse believes is has probable cause to believe is a forged document. That's not a legitimate document. And he knew that. Does he or, or he didn't Again, know that? I don't know what the president knows or didn't know. I mean, I, I the investigation is, I'm not a mind reader, and the investigation has not gotten to that point. Uh, so that's, you know, first is finding out who created the forgery. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate your call. To Irene in Mobile, Alabama, you're on the air. Thank you, sir. I listen at you every, every, every day when I'm at home, but I don't quite understand how people could get anybody's record. I can't get my daughter's health record or Social Security or nothing unless she gives me permission. My grandmother Mm -hmm. was Black Creek and African American. She died at 106, and we had to have whatever you had to get. The only way we could get it was to write Baltimore where the census was taken and make her up whatever they needed to send it back to, to Montgomery for us to do what we needed to do. Thank you for that question. Jerry, with, with this uh, t- time of transparency that the president has touted as he was running for office, w- wouldn't he just be able to speak the word and have those original documents released? I would think so. I mean, all he would have to, all Barack Obama would have to do would be say, look, I'm going to waive privacy concerns. I'm you know, running for the president or the president. And my records are going to be made public. Uh, that's all that would be required. Now, um, the pro- problem with Barack Obama is he won't do it. We don't have his passport records. We don't have his school records. We don't know if he's a foreign exchange student. We don't have his adoption records. Uh, we know he used the name uh, Barry Satoro and another name Soy Barca when he was in Indonesia with with his stepfather and his mother, ages something like uh, age 4 to 10 or 6 to 10. I believe it was 6 to 10. And so it looks like he was adopted, but we don't have any adoption records or know if any papers were filed in Indonesia or in the United States to have Barack Obama be formally Barry Satoro uh, or Barry Soy Barca. Hey, have classmates come forward saying, oh, yeah, he was in my class, I sat next to him? Oh, in fact, hey, we have the... Records from Indonesia, that are formal records from the school which have been validated, where he is listed as Barry Satoro, an Indonesian citizen and a Muslim. But we don't know whether that's what his father said or whether it involved a formal adoption, because Barack Obama will not authorize the release of any adoption papers if they exist. Another call from Mobile, Alabama. Pat, you're on the air. Sir? Yes. I want to thank you very, very much for what you're doing and your your posse that you have. Tell them thank you, and it's about time that somebody put some feet on the ground and some push, push and shove just the way he's doing. But I'm not talking about ugly push and shove, but to get to it, to the facts. Well, the truth is, I think, very important to drive in this case. Always the pursuit is for the truth. 
And thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your call. Thank you, Pat. And, uh, folks, you can, uh, uh, this program is going to be linked on our site within just a couple of hours from now. You can uh, share a link to other people. You can obtain copies, CD copies of today's program to get the, the message out uh, here through our switchboard at 800 729 You can go to WND.com. You'll find story after story on this. The new ebook is out now, A Question of Eligibility, uh, by our guest here today, Dr. Jerome Corsi, and uh, also Michael, uh, is it? Uh, Michael Zulo, Zulo. Z-U-L-L-O. So, folks, these are all means to get the information out. You're not going to be hear it, hearing it on your nightly news tonight. To Kalamazoo, Michigan, John, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, I just have a, a concern about the entire question of his eligibility, which is a sincere concern. But also... Um, this president, you should not be surprised when he is willing to put forth a forged document as uh, grounds for his eligibility when he has been ignoring the Constitution. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm an ex-Marine, and as far as I'm concerned, if I had done the same blatant disregard of the Constitution when I had taken an oath to, uh, to uphold and defend that very Constitution, it would have been grounds for a court-martial and dismissal from the service. And at what point will a senator stand up and say, this president is blatantly uh, just disregarding our Constitution and it's grounds for impeachment? Well, I think this is a game-changer with uh, Sheriff Arpaio's investigation. Uh, you can get from WND the press release. You can watch and pull down the videos of the press conference, all free. Uh, we've written this electronic book, the e-book, A Question of Eligibility. It gives you a much more detailed discussion, including photographs of the internal workings of the conclusions of the posse on the information that's being released. So there's plenty of information out there now, and you can get it in the hands of your senators and congressmen and demand a congressional investigation. This is what Sheriff Arpaio called for yesterday at the press conference. Let's go next to Toma, and we have James calling. You're on the air, James. Hi, thank you for taking my call. I've been looking forward to having an opportunity to speak to you, Mr. Corsi. Uh, thank you for your courage and your uh, diligence in this matter, and I hope that you'll continue with this. My main concern uh, that I'm calling on, um, as I recall, there have been multiple documents, different documents, put forth as his birth certificate. Are you looking at just the one document that's most recent, or are you looking at the collection of documents that have been presented? Well, the collection have been examined, but since this is the one the White House posted on its website as saying this is the long-form birth certificate, the PDF file, the green one you can see on the White House website, the sheriff's posse felt that that was the one to focus on. As the president said, you know, this is my birth certificate. And when that document, the PDF file, the green one posted on the White House website, was found to be a forgery, uh, that was, you know, significant enough. A crime had been committed, probable cause to believe a crime had been committed in creating that document. Don't so the cold case posse of, uh, reported on that and is now looking for who is the perpetrator. James? Go ahead, James. Don't we have a pattern, then, of uh, this sort of evolution of forgery on this? I mean, isn't that you know, an ongoing criminal conspiracy. And, you know, you could you could be looking at RICO laws. You could be looking at a number of things there. Well, and again, I think these are all very important questions because not only the birth certificate, remember the Selective Service Registration Card, Obama was found to be a forgery, too. We'll be back in just 60 seconds for the final segment today as we're speaking with uh, Jerry Corsi today on a question of eligibility. We'll be right back. You're listening to Crosstalk on VCY America. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website's worldviewweekend.com. Continue our series on Romans chapter 1, Is God Removing His Divine Hand of Protection on America? And what happens when that occurs? Romans 1 verse 28 says that, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. Verse 29 goes on to lay out what some of those things are. Debased in the Greek translation means not passing the test. 
In other words, they don't pass the biblical test. It's often a phrase that was used to describe useless or worthless metals. These are people who are useless and worthless. They, they become vain and useless and futile in their thinking. And what's the end result? One of the things they end up being is deceitful and they end up being non-discerning. Do we have a lot of leaders at both the religious, economic, and political level that are non-discerning? Indeed, we do. And I believe it's part of God removing his hand of protection on our nation. You're listening to Crosstalk on the VCY American Network as we're speaking with uh, Jerome Corsi here today about uh, the Obama birth certificate and uh, startling findings that were released yesterday by a courageous sheriff, Joe Arpaio, out of the state of Arizona. And uh, taking your calls and issues here today, uh, this, again, folks, is information you will not hear on your nightly, nightly national news tonight. Let's go to Massachusetts, and, buddy, go ahead. You're on the air. Thank you, Jim. Well, don't be surprised about this, because as I, the mainstream media are in his are in Obama's corner. But no, no, no way, no doubts about it. Hello. Yes, we're listening. Yeah, what's your comment? Or I, was your question? Say, I told your I told your screener what I was going to say, but he said uh, I better tone it down. Said it might be a little too strong for the radio. Okay. Well, thanks, buddy. Let's go next to Ed in Minnesota. You're on the air, Ed. Yeah, thanks for taking my call, and I just want to concur with the last couple of people that were speaking about uh, the hand of protection that uh, we have lost, because my concern is, I know that, uh, and I, I have, uh, you know, documental proof that Obama is uh, our enemy in the White House, but what bothers me is the cover-up by the media, the Democratic Party, and even the Congress. Why are all these people afraid of Obama? Why are they covering up for him? Why are they, they know what's happening to America. Why don't they do something about it? Who can we trust? Hmm. Wow. Well, these are very good questions, and I think Congress needs to have an investigation, and the American people need to be told the truth. Uh, that's what we're after here. I mean, the cold case posse you know, demanded of me that if I was wrong, if they could find the birth certificate to be legitimate, I would go public and say I was wrong, and I agreed to do that. So I'm after the truth here. And when they when the cold case posse has now said a crime has been committed with both the birth certificate and the Selective Service registration card, crimes have been committed, and I think the American people should demand that the perpetrators be found and brought to justice. Next to Diana in New Lisbon, Wisconsin. You're on the air. Um, hi. Um, regarding um, Obama's eligibility as president, whatever happened to that soldier who refused to report for active duty because he said he refused to serve under a man who was not commander-in-chief? Yeah, that was Mr. Lakin, I believe. Yes, Colonel Lakin. He was court-martialed. He was stripped of his Army rank, medical doctor. He was court-martialed, and he was, um, you know, he was uh, lost all of his retirement privileges. It was a disaster. I mean, it was and because he dared challenge the eligibility of Obama. To uh, the state of Idaho, Jeff, you're on the air. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. I mean, my, my question, as hard-hitting as it is, is if the document is determined to be fraudulent and that it was perpetrated and pushed through and knowingly by the president, is that not an act of treason, is my question. Well, I think we've, we've got a long way to go before we, you know, you get to the what did the president know and when did he know it question. But uh, certainly the concerns the gentleman is raising are legitimate. I think Sheriff Arpaio made it clear that, you know, the intent of the investigation now is to find the person who actually forged the documents, bring that person to justice, and then the investigation can go from there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pick up one final call from Zanesville, Ohio. Kathy, thank you for calling. You're on the air. Hello. I have a comment. We've seen the administration get away with so many things over the years that are questionable as to whether or not they're constitutional. And I believe that the uh, adamant Obama supporters aren't really going to care about this issue and probably or possibly even find a way to blame it on the conservatives or Republicans. 
especially since it's an election uh, coming up. <clears throat> and I'm wondering if it's legitimate to be concerned about these issues and if the White House can get around this, excuse me, some way. Well, I think the, the pursuit has got to be for the truth. I think the American people deserve the truth, and it's not a political or politically motivated examination. I've agreed that if I were wrong, I would, you know, would have told the, would have gone public with the cold case posse's conclusion, whatever it was. Now that they've cold case, Jorah Pyle's investigators have determined that there's a crime committed uh, with the forgery of the birth certificate and the Selective Service registration card, then I think the investigation's got to go to find who the perpetrators were and bring them to justice. Mm -hmm. Kathy, thank you for your call, and to others of you as well. Uh, we don't have time for further calls, but uh, can we suggest you go to WND.com and also check out the new ebook here by our guest today, A Question of Eligibility. Uh, Jerry, we thank you for being with us today, sharing this information, and uh, telling the truth here to our listeners. Thanks, Vic. Uh, thank, uh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jim. It's always an honor to be with you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for your time, and uh, we'll let you go to your next interview here. Thank you, Chip. Thank you. Bye-bye now. That was Dr. Jerome Corsi, and again, some very startling information uh, coming forth from the uh, Sheriff's Office yesterday, Sheriff Joe Arpaio in the state of Arizona. As we come to the conclusion of today's program, joining me in studio right now is Vic Eliason with uh, an announcement here to share with our listeners. Well, thank you, Jim. Um, first of all, what a powerful program mm -hmm. today. Uh the announcement I have has to do with two dear friends that have been involved uh, with this ministry in two different capacities. At uh, 103 this afternoon, Pastor Glenn H. Teasdale, a longtime broadcaster on VCY America, went to be with his beloved Savior. Hmm. At 103 this afternoon, also February the 28th, just a few days ago, uh, Moody Meredith Plunkett, the man who was on our board of directors for many years and was involved in the early founding of our radio ministry, went to be with his Savior. Mm. And so our prayers are for the Holy Spirit to comfort the family. And, of course, uh, we think of these two men of God who have been a blessing and now rejoicing with their transporting from this earth and its pain and suffering. Yeah to be with our blessed Savior. Amen. Thank you, Vic, for sharing that with us here today. And listeners, be in prayer for both of these families, the Plunkett family as well as the uh, Teasdale family, uh, both which have had significant impact here in the ministry of VCY America. We thank you for joining us each and every day here on Crosstalk. Tell others about the program. Again, we'll have links to this today's program on our site. CD copies also available by calling us at 800 729 9829. Thanks for joining us this week here on Crosstalk. Have a blessed weekend. Listening to Crosstalk via satellite and the internet from VCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53208, or download by RSS or podcast from crosstalkamerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk.